pass the scripture. I want to come from Genesis chapter 50. Genesis chapter 50. You have to say amen. They don't mean nobody has it. I had the privilege to travel with Bishop as we went to the Cornerstone City of Refuge. And as he was preaching the word, he said something and God dropped something in my spirit. And since we're in the middle of series right now, not really in a series, we're kind of in the middle. We're going to do a couple of sandwiches until God gets us back in the series. And this is going to be one of those sandwiches, y'all. So Genesis chapter 50, beginning at the 19th verse, listen to what the word of God says. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for I am in the place, and for am I in the place of God? But as for you, you thought it evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is in this day to save much people alive. I want you to remain standing because I want to read it from the Amplified Bible to give us even more clarity of God's word. And Joseph said unto them, Feel not, for I am, for am I in the place of God? Vengeance is his, not mine. As for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it for good to bring to pass, to bring about that many people should be kept alive as they are this day. I want to speak from the subject this morning. You can't see it because God is in it. You can't see it because God is in it. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. This passage of scripture is the tail end of a story. We see the end. I'm going to take us to the beginning. We see the end. Where everything that Joseph went through was meant for good. Everything he went through, every trial, every tear, every heartache, every pain he went through, he says it himself. He doesn't, God doesn't say it. Joseph testifies that you fought for my evil, and God meant it for my good. Now, if we go several years ahead, if we go, you don't have to turn there, if we go to Genesis 37, yes, sir. this is where it begins because Joseph has a dream. Yes, yes, yes. And his dream denotes that other people are going to be bowing down to him. Mm. And he tells it to his brothers, and he tells it to his father. And his father rebukes him. His brother makes fun of him. But something the scripture said that caught my attention. The Bible said that his father observed the same. Yes, sir. Which means he kept it in his mind. Can I tell you something? God will give you a glimpse of your destiny. Say it, say it. But won't show you what you got to go through to get there. Oh, y'all must already know that. That's why I'm going to say amen. Right where you are. God will give you a glimpse of where you're supposed to be. But won't let you see what you have to go through. He does that because if we would be truthful with ourselves this morning. And we would look back and evaluate what we've been through. If God would have told us before we went through it that we had to go through it, some of us wouldn't have went through it. Amen. Somebody should say amen. 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 If God had really showed us all the tears and the heartaches and pain and disappointment and people making fun of us, if he had showed us all that, some of us would have backed down and said, no, oh God, I can't do that. But he didn't show us that. Amen. We couldn't see it because God was so he did not allow us to see the in-between. Have you ever noticed God has shown you the beginning? Yeah. And he'll show you the end. Yeah. But he'll let you write the story yourself. Oh, well, somebody should get happy right there. He'll, he'll show you the beginning once upon a time. And he'll give you the end. And they live happily ever after. Yeah. But you've got to write 
life was in between. What happens between once upon a time and living happily ever after? It's a whole lot of trials, a whole lot of pain, a whole lot of tribulation, a whole lot of heartache. And you would think, y'all, you would think, you would think, you would think, as bad as his brothers were treating him, Joseph should have saw them plotting against him. Would, would you think that? Would you think as bad as they hated him and he knew it? They despised him and he knew it. Yet still, when his father sent him out to look for him, to look for them, and they were not where they were supposed to be, it did not even factor in his mind that I might not want to really go look for them because they don't like me. Because he was the son of his old age. Secondly, they hated him because his father gave him a coat of many colors. We knew they ain't like that. That's the first thing they ripped up when they got him. And then they hated him doubly because he began to have dreams of his destiny. And they hated him even more. And you mean to tell me he didn't know that they felt that way? He couldn't feel it? Some of y'all sit beside people. Some of y'all see them from a distance and say, I know they just don't like me just the way they looked at me. Uh -huh. Oh, y'all might as well say, man, I'm really in this house this morning. You might as well just come on down with them. I'm going right in your street. I'm right in your house at your kitchen table eating breakfast with you this morning. You know I am. Come on, pass me some more grits. <laughs> so he knew, but God did not allow him to put two and two together. Like he's done some of you. Amen. Like he's done some of you. Amen. When you look back at it, you say to yourself, I should have saw that coming. Yes. I, I should have knew it was going that way. I, I should have I should have even walked in that. How is it that I, I'm so spiritual and I got all these gifts, but I didn't see that coming? Most of us, we just look at the blessing. Wow, that's what God wants to do with me. 
That's where the love he wants to take me. That's what he wants to, how he wants to use me. And you just look at how he wants to use you. And you just say, yes, 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 yes. Yes, sir. And don't ask them, what is the condition of this blessing? Because every blessing has a condition. Oh, you didn't know that. Every blessing has a condition. There's a condition of the blessing. And we don't ask them the condition of the blessing because the blessing looks so good. And then we get in the midst of it and try to figure out what is going on. You're just on your way to the blessing. So God does not allow us to see some things because if we see it, it will, it will stop us from accomplishing what God has called us to do. If God had shown Joseph that his brother was going to throw him in the pit, and not only throw him in the pit, but sell him into slavery, a son that was loved by his dad, and his dad was rich, was going to be sold into slavery. If God had shown him that he was going to be in the house, and the woman was going to accuse him of rape, he didn't even get them, but she accused him of rape. He was felt better if something happened, but he went to jail, ain't nothing happened. Now he in jail, ain't nothing happened. If God had shown them that even in the midst of the jail, he was going to bless somebody, and the person he blessed was going to forget about him. Yes. Can I get a witness in the house? The person he blessed, the person he helped, the person he got to the level that they are, forgot all about him. Yeah. If God had showed him all that, Joseph might not have allowed Because you know they don't like me. So if I get out there too far, they're going to do something to me. But God did not show Joseph. Because if he had shown Joseph, it would have messed up his destiny. Yes. Because we have a tendency to look at the tribulation and not realize that no matter what tribulation I go through, the blessing is going to be greater than the tribulation. Yes. And God shows us the tribulation, we'll never receive the blessing that's greater than the tribulation. Joseph testified. And the thing that puzzles me 
They said, we'll go through four to eight years of school to get the degree, to get the job. We'll practice on the team to start in the game because we said all that is worth it. But we won't go through the tribulation when God has already showed us the promise. And we don't realize that what we see in this physical realm was really built on the spiritual realm. So since you've got to go through some things to get to where you want, sometimes you gotta start at the bottom of a business to get to the top of the business. Sometimes you gotta work and go to school. You got to go through something to get what you want. It's built on what God does in the spiritual realm. You got to go through something to get what God wants you to be. And some of you don't even realize what God wants you to be is ten times better than where you are right now. God wants to take you higher, but you're too busy looking at the tribulation. God wants to do more in life, but you're too busy looking at the tribulation and the trouble and the problem and say, God, I don't want to go through. But you should be a, like a gladiator on this come scandal. We are gladiators. We are soldiers. We're walking through this thing. We're going to go through because God is going to break us out more than a conqueror. Can I tell you, 
stop being a skinny cat and tell the devil, like we used to tell my son, come on, Cletus, bring it home. So you can't find a church that won't let you down. 
you can't even find a spouse that won't even let you down. Because sometimes your expectation is too high. I just knew, like my wife just knew I was going to bring pizza home, and I brought chicken home. And she said, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. You told me not to call you. You told me not to ask you to. I brought home what I want. And you want pizza. I let you down. I'm sorry. I'm not God. You can't find nobody who won't let you down but God. You need to stop tripping, baby. They just start tripping. They, they won't be there for me. I've been there for everybody. They won't nobody be there for me. God said, I'm there. Have you tried me? Have you ever thought, maybe, that's just your ministry? Amen. Oh, Nobody don't want to say nothing now. Have you ever considered, maybe it is your ministry to be there for everybody else? And then you know what you cried out? This is your syndrome. If your ministry is to be there for everybody else, your syndrome is, God, when really is somebody going to be there for me? God said, have not been here 24-7. I've been here all the time. I don't want to call you in the ministry. I don't want to be there in the beginning. I've been there in the middle. I've been there in the end. Why are you trying to wait on somebody else? Can't nobody do you like me. Can't nobody rock your world like me. Don't you know I got it going on? Ooh, I need mean, another vacation. Because you want to get it going on. God said he got it going on. And you're too busy looking for your reward in somebody else. And God ain't letting nobody else give you your reward because he wants you to depend and trust in him. Yeah. You, you, you haven't read the Bible? Have, have you not read the Bible? Jesus had 12. He felt like nine of them, he knew one was going to betray him. So now he got 11. He knew, let's see, he got 11, 30. He knew the other eight may not stick close to him, so he won't worry about them. So he had an inner three. The sons of thunder and Peter. The one he knew had his back. The one he knew would never let him down. The one he knew that would be there, he called him a rock. He changed his name to Cephas, which means rock. That was the very one that when the rubble hit the road, Amen. he won't there. Right. He won't there. Amen. If Jesus was like some of you, he would have got up shut everything down and would have went to the cross. Because yeah. he still had the power to walk out. Amen. The little chains they had him couldn't hold him. He, all he had to do was call for, hey, Michael, come to my rescue. I'm disappointed now. I ain't going nowhere no more. Take these chains off me. I'm leaving. Amen. That's what some of you do. That's what some of us do. Get disappointed and say, forget it all. I ain't doing this no more. I ain't signed up for this. Why are you lying? Amen. When you said yes, Lord, you signed up for it all. I ain't here but you ain't read the small print on the contract. That ain't my fault. That ain't God's fault. You should have read the small print on the contract. When you said yes, you signed up for it. Yeah. But Pastor, where is the small print? Have you ever picked up the 66 books of the Bible? It describes what God does. He ain't doing nothing different. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. What he did in the Old Testament, he does in the New Testament. And what he did in the New Testament, he's doing now. If you want to find out how he worked, all you got to do is pick up the contract and read it. The fine print is right there. The fine print is right there. But he's like some of us. We get in the car. Don't look at how much interest it is and just sign the contract. And then when the balloon payment comes, you're trying to figure out what happened. And the salesman said, you signed the contract. Well, I didn't know that. I can't help you. You didn't read it. You signed it. And we say yes to God. And don't read the contract. And then want to be mad with God when things begin to happen. And God said, I told you to read the book. I told you to read the book. I told you to read the book. God is saying, I don't need you scared anymore. I don't need you hiding out anymore. I, don't need, I need somebody who's going to go all the way with me. You can't 
because God is in it. And you should have enough confidence that if God is in it, I'll trust him. Can we stop saying a lie? Amen. Can we stop testifying a lie? Lord, I trust you. I believe you. Lord, I say yes to everything that's up my money. I say yes to everything that's up my children. I say yes to everything that's up this job. I'm going to take care of that. I say yes to everything that's up my enemies. I'm going to get them. Yeah. 
begins to turn the same color as the chocolate candy. Right. Have you ever noticed the chocolate candy was outnumbered? Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. It was outnumbered. Right. It was surrounded on every side. But that little one chocolate candy turned everything around. You may be outnumbered. You may be surrounded on all sides. Yeah. But if you let God drop down in the midst as a commando soldier in the midst of your trouble, he'll turn the whole thing around for you. Let him in today. Let him. 